Okay, so this is another quick video in the Beginner's Guide to Scan and Cut Canvas series I've been doing over the last couple of weeks. Now, if you're not sure what those videos are, if you go to YouTube and in the search box at the top, type Apple Lover 53, it's usually the first one that comes up. You, this is my logo. Click on my channel. I'll just stop the introductory video and then all my videos are listed in videos and in playlists. If you go to the playlist called Created Playlists and it will show you all the playlists and the one that you're looking for is Scan and Cut for Beginners which is here. When you select it, I'll just stop this video. It will just randomly choose a video for you, but on the right hand side, it will have all the videos that are in this playlist under um, beginners. And the series that I've just been doing since July 2018 are minor at the bottom. So you've got Beginner's Guide to Scan and Cut Canvas Workspace, July 2018. Then you've got Beginner's Guide to Cut and Draw Dashed Lines in Scan and Cut Canvas. This one's going to be the Beginner's Guide to the Editing Icons. So I'm just going to go back to Scan and Cut Canvas. I'm going to select a new blank canvas. And one thing I would like to remind everybody about, because I have had comments on previous videos saying my Canvas workspace doesn't look like yours. I use a Mac and I can only at the moment use the online cloud-based software. I don't have the downloadable version. So all these videos are all for the online version. Underneath this video and all my other videos, there are links to my website. If you've not got the canvas online and you don't know how to find it, but you've just found this video, go and have a look on my website. There's a help and information page that tells you where to find this canvas workspace and lots of other helpful information. But assuming you've registered for free and you've got your online version, this is what it will look like. So today I'm going to talk about the editing icons, which are all in here. So obviously you've got to have something selected to be able to work with them. So the first thing I'm going to do is just come to the basic shapes and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find a heart and I'm going to select it and then I'm going to click it again to get to and it puts one right on top of the other. And I don't know whether you'll see in, in the video, but you should be able to see it in real life that the black line around the edge got darker and that means there are two one on top of the other. So at the moment we've basically just got two hearts. Now if I want to align these two hearts I first of all left click somewhere above this top design and while still pressing I drag down and select both. That has now drawn an imaginary box around them and selected them. So now when I come up to the editing icon, these functions are all highlighted for me. Basically the ones I'm going to go over today are the alignment um, icons and the process overlap icons. So let's just say I want to align them both along the top or along the bottom. I come over here to align, find the one that says top. If you hover over it, it tells you what they are. Top, middle, bottom, left center right okay I want to align these along the top edge so I'm going to choose this that instantly puts them aligned together if I wanted to align them along the bottom edges I select them again I go back to the edit and I choose bottom and it's just align them both to the bottom edges now I want to show you how to use the process overlap options. So at the moment if I just loaded a piece of card onto my 12 by 12 mat it would just basically cut these two separate shapes because it follows a path as I said in the first video. Basically a path is a line of nodes and if I double click on this you'll see here's all the nodes. So the machine will follow this heart then move on to this one and follow this one and cut it and you'll just have two simple hearts and if that's what you want that's fine. 
But if you want to what's called weld these together, which basically means you want them to cut as one shape without this cut in the middle, because if I just align those up like that and send them to the machine and cut, because they are still two separate items, what you will get is the blade will follow here and it will cut right through this one. So you'll have this cut and then it will follow this. It will cut that part of the heart and this part. So it'll end up being in three bits and that might not be what you want. You might want it to be cut as one. So again, you drag your imaginary box around both. You come up to edit and you come down to process overlap and you choose weld. That has now welded the two shapes together and this time when I click on either one, it doesn't matter which, it puts a bounding box around everything, which now means this is one shape. So if I just undo that, select both, right click, make them a group and then hit the D key on my keyboard to duplicate them for now. So we'll come back to this pair what I'll do to try and make it easier, I'll fill them in with colour, so I'll ungroup them. I'll fill this one in with red, so I'll come to the fill box and fill it with red, and this one I'll fill with blue. So you can see they're just two completely separate shapes. If I select both, go to edit, weld, they will change to one colour, and that's because the software has taken this curve out and this is all one cut now and that is exactly what you'll get if you weld those two shapes together and cut it. Whereas these two, if I ungroup them, you would get bits. If you overlap them and cut them as they are, you'll get this heart cut as one, you'll get this section cut as a separate bit and then you'll get this bit cut as a third bit. So that's weld. Now I'm just going to hit D on my keyboard to create another duplicate set. This time I'm going to select them both, I'm going to come to edit and this time I'm going to come to divide and select divide. Now I don't know whether you can see, but there are darker sections. So this time, if I drag the heart apart, you'll see I've got three bits. And effectively, that would be what you would get if you cut this without welding, okay? So if you want to break a shape up, you can use divide. So let's just undo that and put it back together. So this is now in three bits. So I'll colour this so you can see. So I'll choose one part, I'll colour it red, I'll go to this bit, I'll make it yellow, and I'll go to this bit and I'll make it green. Okay, so that's three separate parts. For now, I'll just group it, right click and group just to keep it together. Let's have a look at these again. So again, we've still got two separate hearts. I'm just overlapping them. I'm going to select them both, come to edit, and remove overlapped. Now, I'm just going to colour them in just so you can see. So I'll make one orange and I'll make this one brown. So the brown one is on top of the orange. I'm going to select them both, come back to edit and I'm going to come back to the process overlap and I'm going to choose remove overlap. Wait for the software to work and then drag them away. Now this time it's removed the section that this heart overlapped. So it was like that. So basically what it's done, this was on top and we used remove overlap. So where these two overlap, it's removed a section. So that's what we've got. So I'm gonna select them both, right click and group them. Now I'm just gonna get two more 
And again, I'm going to fill them in with colour. You don't have to do this because the machine cannot cut by colour. It's just hopefully a visual aid for you to see on screen. So I'm going to make one dark blue. I'm going to come to the colour fill box and I'm going to make the other one a pale blue. We'll put the pale blue one on top of the dark blue one. Select both go back to edit and this time we'll use subtract. In fact, before we do that, I'm gonna select both and make a duplicate of them. So I'm gonna select both of these, the pale blue is on top of the dark blue. I'm gonna to come to edit and this time subtract. Now it's just cut that away, which basically is the equivalent of this one. If I ungroup this, you'll see. Now this time I'm going to select the pale blue and I'm going to send it to the back so the dark blue is on top and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come to edit, subtract and that's cut that away. So there are several ways to do things in Scan and Cut Canvas and it's just whichever way you prefer. So this result with the pale blue on top of the dark blue using subtract gave me the same result as using this, which was remove overlap. Subtract with this one, because I put the dark blue on top, it subtracted the bit that overlapped. So that is the editing icons, which are all here. So I'm just going to select both of these and group them and make them smaller just so they fit on the mat. And I'm going to select these and make these smaller. So they're your editing icons which are under the edit tab. So now let's just choose the two blue ones that are welded together and go back to edit. So if I want to flip these, I with them selected, I can now choose whether I want to flip them vertically or horizontally. So if I choose vertically, it flips them upside down. I can click undo. If I want to flip them horizontally, I can use that one. And then there are other icons within here that I can use. So if I want to make a duplicate, I can hit this icon here, which will create me a duplicate. I can select them, right click and use duplicate. Or I can select them and hit the D key on my keyboard. So there are several different ways to do the same process. I'm just going to select them and get rid of them. If I make a mistake, I can click undo and that's just going to bring back the last option. Or again, I've got undo and redo along here, which I showed you in the first video. So that's the editing icons. I can also group things together. So let's just move that out of the way. So these I'll ungroup for now by using the right click and ungroup. You can see when I click on them, they're all three sections. If I select them, go to edit, I can group them from here. You know they're a group because they've got one bounding box around everything. Whereas if I right click and ungroup them, you'll see there are three bounding boxes around each part of the design. So that is the editing functions within Scan and Cut Canvas. I hope you found that helpful. Please give the video a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.